Hello and welcome to another Tech Minds tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a radio streaming app using Xcode for iOS devices. Now this can be used for iPhone and it can also be used for iPad. In fact, the same code can also be used for tvOS. So the first thing we need to do is actually start Xcode. Okay, once Xcode has started, click on Create New Xcode Project. For this demonstration, I'm going to use this single view application. Let's just call this demo. Let's call this radio demo. Now here we've got devices. I'm going to change this to, um, I'm going to leave this as universal. This is so that it will work on the iPhone and also on the iPad. Click next choose where you want to store the application okay so we're ready to go Let me just make this full screen so it's a little bit easier for everybody to see okay so the first thing we're going to need to do is just set a couple of things up we need to import some frameworks uh, and the frameworks that we need are actually the AV kit and AV foundation. So you can just go ahead and type them in in here. Then we need to go on to the delegate side and we need to add on or include the AV player view delegate which can be added here. Just going to open up this area in case we need to add anything later on. Now we need to add some properties for a couple of items here. So we're declaring an AV player and we're calling it player and we've also got an AV player item and we're naming that player item. We're also, we're also going to have a couple of buttons in the application. One's going to be play and one's going to be stop. It's going to be a very basic application just to demonstrate how easy it is to stream radio from the internet. So we need to add two buttons and we're going to call them we're going to call them button play and button stop. Okay. Now this is pretty much it for our header section. We don't really need to do anything else here. So we can now move over to the M section. So what I need to do now is I'm just going to paste in these two button actions here. Just delete the last character there. Open it up so that we can put some code in there. So here we have button play and button stop. What we also need to do is actually synthesize the player and the player item. That can just go underneath our implementation. Okay, so what we need to do now is put in the code for button play. This is actually only three lines of code. Just paste that in there. Let me just explain what these are. <clears throat> okay, so we have the player item, which is essentially telling Xcode where the URL is, where the stream is coming from. So here I've just got a, a random radio station, which I know exists, and that's here. That's their IP address and port number. <clears throat> now you can probably find that information from a PLS file. So if you if you're creating an application for a radio station, 
and you go onto their website and you click on the listen here or listen now or whichever they've got button and you click on it and it downloads or opens up a .pls file you can actually open that file, that PLS file, into a text editor program such as Text Wrangler or Text Editor or whichever you use and you can view the contents of it and normally there will be at least one one item in there which shows the IP address and the port number and this is how you format it within this line now the second line here this one it's now assigning the player item or the, the, the station's URL and it's just telling player where to play from now the third command the last one in this method is actually play and it's very very easy <laughs> as you can see now button stop um, we want a way of stopping the, the, the broadcast it's actually declared as pause so I'm just going to type in pause and that's it okay so that's pretty much all the coding you need to do now what we need to do is create a couple of buttons on our main storyboard and then link them to these actions so I've got to go over to main storyboard now just so that it looks a lot nicer or looks more like a phone I'm just going to change the size here you don't have to do that you can use any size depending on which device you're uh, targeting the label line here is optional you don't have to do that right let's drag a couple of buttons so the first button is going to be play if I can spell today uh, and just so that this is a lot easier to, to view I'm just going to just change the background and text color and you'll be able to see the, the buttons a bit more clearly there we go okay so I'm just going to work command with C and then command V just to paste it over just so I've got two buttons that look the same double click that one and type in stop okay so we've now got our two buttons what we now need to do is link these buttons to our methods so that we can actually execute the code so clicking on the view controller here going over to the arrow on the inspector here at the top it shows us our connections under received actions it should now show us the two methods that we've already previously declared so we just click on the X next to button play drag it over let go of the mouse and select touch up inside and we do the same for button stop or BTN stop as I've called it here drag it over touch up inside and then we can run the application now we can run the application but it's going to fail it's, it will run but it will not connect to the radio station I'll run the application and show you why it's a change that they made recently which we need to we need to set a setting for okay so the application is running in simulator if I click play it will not play let me just stop the application from running down here we can see app transport security has blocked a clear text HTTP resource load since it is insecure temporary exceptions can be configured via your apps info plist file okay so by default now any application that you create it has any kind of um, connection to the outside world is blocked and you have to change a plist setting so that the application can communicate to the outside world this is very easy to do so I click on radio demo here on the up top left hand corner and I go across to where it says info now this is our plist properties what I'm going to do I'm going to click anywhere so one of the line is, lines are highlighted I'm going to just right mouse click as it were click on add row now with the mouse over 
the selection here, just scroll up and you'll see one. This is App Transport Security Settings. Okay, so now what we do, we click this two little arrow here and ensure that it says dictionary. It's very important that it says dictionary. The next step will be to click the little white arrow so that it's pointing downwards. With the mouse over the blue selected area, right mouse click, click add row. Make sure allow arbitrary loads is selected. This is set to a boolean and then change that to yes. What we should now be able to do, in fact, I'm just gonna save, no option to save. Uh, now I'm going to click the play button, which will build and run the application in the simulator. And then I'm gonna click play. And you should now be able to hear it. And then of course, pressing the stop button will stop it from streaming. Okay, so that's pretty much the end of part one. If you've got any questions, or if you like this video, please like it, subscribe. And also, if you have any questions about this code, please ask them in the comments below. This is part one. I'm gonna do a part two which will cover how to extract the metadata from the stream. The metadata will be details of the track or artist. So for example, if, if the station is actually transmitting the metadata on the stream, you'll be able to show that information in real time on your application. It's very useful for the end user to know at a quick glance on, their, on the app which track and which artist is actually currently playing. It's very good. So watch out for part two. Anyway, catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.